what is going down everybody welcome to wine talk with tesh i am at so many cameras now it's insane uh, and I'm looking at my laptop camera, but that's not the camera I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm supposed to be looking up here. And then I got you on Instagram. Welcome to Wine Talk with Tesh. I'm excited because we are in Australia this month. And uh, I don't know if I just put on an accent. And if I did, I did not mean to. Uh, but I'm excited because the wines this month are incredibly delicious. And I'm excited to put them in front of you. Uh, if you are on Instagram, what's up? I see you. What's up, Stacia? See you, baby. Uh, if you're on Instagram, cool. If Instagram works for you and I'm in your hand right now and you're just rocking your phone, by all means, stay there. But if you have the means to switch over to Facebook or YouTube, you get a little bit more of a full experience. You get more of Tesh with all of the graphics and stuff and the hoorahs in the background. So, um, hey, Nora, I'm really glad that you asked who the music is. Uh, for, first of all, hang on, let me back up. Uh, Jordan. Yeah, J didn't add the Jordan. <laughs> uh jordan sent me a link earlier today and was like hey uh i have some music for for you that you can like listen through and like pick the songs and i picked that song because i thought it was like a great way to open up i really do it so i'm really glad to hear that you like that song because i, I selected it um and then uh we were loving oh, Ralph, Ralph and Ralph and Marianne really liked it too. I really hope you guys like the outro song too, because I think it's uh, all the names are really. I feel like they really describe the like what drinking with Tesh is kind of like. You know what I mean? Like, oh, if you want to drink a little bit more, that's kind of how it starts. And then, uh, what is the other song title, Jordan? It was "Hope You're Going to Be Okay" or something. <laughs> hope I'm okay. Hope I feel better, which I just think is absolutely hilarious. Um, it, they really describe what it's like to kind of hang out with me. Anyhow, uh, shout outs, of course, the man, the myth, the legend, Jordan is behind the scenes. Uh, hello, so hello. shout out to Jordan and Fluid Concepts for uh, hooking up all the stuff and making it look dope as always. Uh, and then I got a special shout out uh, tonight for my dude, Andrew Wilson. Um, dude. My boy came by and like hooked me up with cameras and lighting and microphone. Um, I, it's listen, man. I'm always so focused on the wine piece uh, that I don't even really think about like the quality of the video or the audio and stuff. But he came by and he just like hooked me up, like hooked me up, hooked me up. Uh, and so uh, Andrew Wilson, I know I know you're out there watching. Thank you, Boo Boo. I appreciate you uh thanks for thanks for putting it together uh and i hope that you guys are appreciating that uh we're using a nicer camera we're using a nicer microphone so you can hopefully hear me a little bit better all that fun stuff um and if you have any feedback on it uh, or you know uh you know type it in the comments and let me know so all right we're in australia this month um i want to talk a little bit about australia so jordan's gonna throw up the map here and i'm gonna kind of guide you with where we're gonna be uh on this first uh well, I'm going to tell you, we'll only bring up the map once, but I'm going to kind of tell you where we're going to be at. So the first wine that we're going to be drinking is going to be the uh, the Penfolds Bin 311 Chardonnay. Um, the bin system is kind of one of Penfolds like things. Um, they, they name all their wines by bin. It's just like an, it's just like a, a, a sorting system that they used to use and it just stuck. So they just call them like bin, whatever. Oh, where do I find this wine? It's in bin 311. Um, but this Chardonnay is absolutely stunning. And on this map, so what's unique about Penfolds as a brand um, is they kind of specialize in taking grapes from all over different regions and then going, this is, we're going to blend those different regions together. And this is what the product is going to be. So if we look at the map, originally this wine, even just like, I want to say like the previous vintage, this wine used to come out of this green area uh, on the right hand side uh, that's known uh, as Tumbarumba within the New South Wales region in that green region. Um, now what's happening is they're actually picking and choosing from different plots. So we're getting Tumbarumba. We're also getting Adelaide Hills, which is in South Australia over in the orange portion of the map. Uh, and then if you, if you look at the very bottom portion, it doesn't have a color, but there's a, a you know, the Tasmania region, which is that island down there. Um, it's, I don't even know if you would call that an, an island. It's, it's huge. Uh, but down in Tasmania, 
um, is also where, where the three regions where we get the grapes for this particular Chardonnay. So, um, so and then on the second wine, uh, when we get to the Yangara, uh, we're going to be in, uh, in McLaren Vale, which if you look on the orange section, um, you, you can very clearly see this is Adelaide there. Uh, in, in the bright white letters, that's where the second wine is going to be coming from uh, within South Australia. So uh, that's where we're going to be at in the world. That's where we're going to be at in the, for the month. And I'll, I'll, I'll guide you guys as that comes back up again. Um, quick note, uh, if you guys have not had or heard of Penfolds before, uh, Penfolds is an iconic brand. Um, they, they've been around forever. They've been around since 1844 um they make some of the best wine i mean even their inexpensive wines uh to me i think that for like phenomenal bang for your buck um like their uh their their they have a shiraz that's like 10 to 10 bucks or something it, it's actually really good for a daily drinker um what you end up finding on my stuff is because they make such a wide variety of products um is i i tend to lean towards their their nicer end um and I think a part of that is really just attributed to they make really good high-end product, right? So for the few of you who are able to taste the Napa uh, selection in the California Cab Shiraz, you get an idea if you've tasted those, you get an idea of how special those wines are uh, and why they fetch the prices that they fetch and so on and so forth. So, so yeah, um, they seriously have a place called Tumba Rumba, dude. It's really cool. I know um so anyways uh what what penfolds is really known for is they make one of the most collected wines in the world called the grange which the grange has a really cool story behind it um grange is grange was originally created uh by uh the winemaker max way back in the like the 1950s and what happened was he presented it to the board and was like hey i made this wine um and uh, they were like, no, this is not good. And it was like, it was primarily Shiraz, right? So they were like, no, this is not good. Don't make it anymore. Well, he knew that he was onto something. And so he kept making it and he just hid the barrels in the cellar. And then after like, I want to say it was like 10 years or something, he went back and uh, pulled it and poured it for them. as like, I've been, you know, I cellared this wine and crazy, crazy good. They were like, oh, you should go make this. And he's like, yeah, I've been making it the whole time. And it just became a thing. One of the most collected wines in the world. If you ever feel like blowing like $750 on a bottle of wine, not a shabby way to do it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's, it's a really, really cool um, collectible. Um, and, and so that's kind of their iconic wine, right? Um, that being said, they have a great lineup. And yes, Carrie Ann, I agree. The Cab Shiraz, is del it was delicious. It's a phenomenal wine. They, they know how to do it. Uh, and Nora, I saw Aunt Nora. I saw you already ordered it. I was like, I sat down to like scarf down my dinner, and I was like, oh shit, oh sorry, uh, oh snap, uh, Aunt Nora just ordered more Chardonnay. So I'm I'm really glad that it struck a chord for you, and I'm really glad that you're enjoying it. And I'm talking a lot this time, but if you guys uh, have not already poured yourself a glass, please do so. And uh, I want to know in the comments section how many of you guys made the steak and the creamy garlic shrimp. I want to know. So jump in there because so far it's fairly quiet and I really like it when you guys, when you guys chime in and be trab in the building. Oh shit. What is up pimp? Um, Trab and I went to college together. So we have a lot of drinking stories together. You don't drink, but I wanted to say what up, what happened, what has happened in life that you don't drink anymore, man. I mean, all that looking good and shit. Um, good for you, bro. I'm, I'm happy to hear that uh, that uh, you're taking care of yourself uh, and it shows. So, um, all right, nobody's chiming in in the comments. I know y'all there. I'll wait. <laughs> oh, you do drink, but not wine. Okay, cool. Fair enough. Yes, Trabanino. Brian, Tra Brian Trabanino. That's him. Y'all remember. James, you made the pairing. It was bomb. I'm really glad to hear that. Uh, and Trav is drinking a Modelo like a G. 
Um, I actually have quite a bit of Modelo. Actually, one of my wine reps uh, came by and he was hanging out. We were tasting and I opened my one of my wine fridges and I, I cracked open the, the, the door and he's like, I love that your one of one rack in my wine fridge was like completely stocked with Modelo. And I was like, look, man, when you taste a lot of wine, sometimes you got to you gotta switch it up. You just got to drink beer. So Modelo is always a good, good choice. Too lazy to cook. Hubby cooking as we sp speak. Carrie Ann, what's he cooking though? That's the question. Uh, and while you type out that answer, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump back into this Chardonnay. So um, this Chardonnay is beautiful. I already told you kind of like what parts of the, the, the Southeastern Australia it comes from. Um, I told you about how iconic this brand is and how, um, how amazing they do in terms of their production and what they have to offer to the world. They make amazing wine. So this Chardonnay spends uh, eight months in French oak. 35% um, of that is new. So a little bit of, a little bit of new French oak, but this is, this is like crisp, clean Chardonnay. This has really high acid. Uh, it's like drinking Chablis. Uh, for those of you who have, uh, purchased a bottle of Chablis from me. Um, it's kind of like drinking Chablis. It has this very uh, uh, mouth-watering acidity. There's a little salinity there. Perfect for seafood or anything that has like a nice rich sauce uh, like Beur Blanc. This is this is the jam with that kind of uh, with that kind of dish. Uh, Alicia, I'm glad to hear that you like the red. I had a glass of the red with my dinner and even Danielle liked it, which is saying something. She's not really a very big red wine drinker. She was like, damn, this is good. I was like, baby, I know. Uh, <laughs> Ralph said, uh, Ralph said, uh, we made steak. Marianne likes the white better than the red because it was cannon -y. but she said she liked it. The red a lot more when she had some steak with it. Love the white though. Dope. Good. I'm glad to hear that. And yeah, I mean, that red wine is going to be too powerful for the salmon. It really is. Um, Fusilli with mushrooms and leeks from our meal box. That is fancy. That's dope. Do you like this chilled or room temp? I like this slightly chilled. I do. This is not, um, yeah, when it's, when it's lean and crisp like this, um, I think it's got a lot going on uh, regardless of the temperature. Uh, slight chill, slight chill for me. I had leftover ham and scalloped potatoes from Easter. Excellent pairing. That sounds really good. Glad Danielle liked it. Lori doesn't usually like whites and likes it. Man, Lori keeps saying that, but you know, she keeps drinking all my wine and telling me how much she loves them. I think Lori just needs to change her story. I don't feel like, uh, I don't feel like that's adding up anymore. Uh, a lot of like lemon blossom and sliced peach, uh, going on with this wine for me. Tell me what you guys are tasting. I'm curious. Cause you know, uh, I always kind of give you guys some feedback, but I want to know, uh, how the wine is treating you. Uh, and I'm glad that you liked it, but what were some tasting notes that you guys had? Yes, because it's not buttery, right? That's, that's exactly right. If it was buttery, um, you know, probably closer to room temp. Um, even though that style isn't necessarily my jam, uh, it is cool. People really like it, but yeah, I do like this wine more chilled than, than room temp, um, because it's lean and not buttery. But, you know, for those of you, uh, who are out there who love the cougar juice, I do have, I do have buttery Chardonnay on the website. Uh, and that's called, uh, Panthera, which is really, really good. Uh, if you like that style, especially. I will say this about the Panthera. I, I'm not like a huge fan of like buttery Chardonnay, but I really like Panthera because it offers that buttery element, but it's very balanced as a like, like a really nice acidity to it. So it's not like very overbearing, very soft Blanqui for me. I think it's just lean and crisp, right? Um, I think it has like that, that, like that peach, that, that apple, green apple kind of thing going on and soft Blanqui to me, uh, is, uh, it can be a little bit more tart and uh, a, little, a lot more light. Like I feel like this wine still has a lot going on and is despite being crisp and lean, it's like, it's got a little bit of body. You know what I mean? Um, kind of like me. <laughs> Let's just be real. I got a lot of body. All right. Uh, I feel like it could taste better as it got a little warmer than chilled. That's okay. My, my, so, so okay. So we got to talk about Chris we got to talk about chilled and that definition of chilled, right? 
when you pop something in the fridge um, in your home refrigerator, which is what most of us do, right? That's probably too cold. Um, so yeah, uh, when you pour your when you pour your white wine, um, let it sit in your glass, let it come up a little bit, and then you can see how that the flavors really start to show because the fridge is going to be a little too chilled. So when I say I like mine slightly chilled, I, I mean, like, I like it a few degrees colder than my my wine cellar, uh, my wine fridges, which I keep both of my wine fridges at 58 degrees. Um, and so when I want it slightly chilled, I'll probably take it down like eight to 10 degrees. So it's got like just a little bit, but your fridge is much cooler than that. So um, can you recommend a wine to pair with booed up on repeat? <laughs> <laughs> strawberry champagne no <laughs> i don't know man clonicky you tell me man um yeah so anybody else like love this wine don't didn't like it wasn't your jam i want to know i know a couple of y'all said that it was yeah i think i was surprised by the lean chris thing i was assuming butter but i'm liking it yeah you know christy you're not alone in that a lot of people have this conception of Chardonnay being uh, rich, buttery, and really in your face, and really kind of like oak driven. Um, and that is true for a lot of California Chardonnay. And despite being New World, um, you know, the these, these wines, especially the Ben 311 has always kind of been classically like crisp and clean. So turn that fridge down to 45. Nah, man, that's too cold for me, bro. <laughs> it's too cold for me. I think for me, like 55 to 58 is perfect. Um, I like it. I forgot to chill it, so this is warm, but the bottle is chilling now. Yeah, get it down to temperature a little bit, and, and I think it'll shine a little bit more, uh, especially if it's sitting at room temp right now. It's probably not going to do the – it's not going to serve the wine justice. So, so yeah. Um, James, I'm glad to hear that you love it. What else do I got for you guys? Um, there's a lot of new stuff on the website. While we are finishing this glass and we transition to the to the to the next wine, there's a lot of new stuff on the website. So check it out. If you have any questions, you guys can always shoot me a message, um, and I'm happy to get back to you. For, I mean, most of y'all know I get back to you fairly quickly. Um, so uh, just just holler if you have any questions. But there's there's a lot of dope wines uh, on the website right now um okay so alicia you gotta break that down i mean i know that you like they go down is do you by smooth do you mean that they go down easy like there's they're not like very burny is that what you mean like alcohol wise um because like smooth smooth is a tough descriptor to follow sometimes like uh like I, I think what we probably i'm guessing i'm guessing that you mean that you probably don't feel like the burn of the alcohol okay yes yeah i mean you know yeah they're they're fairly low alcohol um i think the chardonnay was like uh 13 and then the yangara which uh where is it at the yangara was i don't remember um you know, ours is a little bit more, 14.5, but the, definitely, definitely this Chardonnay is a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, on the lean side. By the way, I'm also curious, uh, I haven't tasted them yet, but uh, I was, somebody told my wife gave me an article and um, it was about these, uh, these like lightly sparkling non-alcoholic wines. And um, I thought it was kind of like, when I read about them, I was like, I kind of like the concept, like it's kind of cool, like, if for those of you who like who are taking a dry month, you know what I mean? You still want to kind of get like your wine on. I haven't had them yet, so I'm going to try them soon. Um, but I'm curious for those of you who are out there who are, who occasionally are like, you have friends who don't drink. I wonder if they would be down to try some non-alcoholic wine. Uh, and and curious like if that if that does anything for you or if there's even really a market for it. Let me know. Uh, jump into the comments and, and let me know. Uh, go ahead and pour yourself a glass of the Yangara Grenache Syrah Mouvedre blend, uh, and we'll move on to that in just a minute. 
Yungara uh, is another one of those uh, iconic Australian brands. Probably not as widespread uh, as Penfolds is. I don't think they, they have the same level of reach. Um, but I just think that Penfolds has been, Penfolds has done a great job of being on all different tiers. So Yungara, uh, some of you may have heard of, my guess is that probably many of you haven't had before, um, but in the Australian wine world, they've been around, they've been around since like 1946. Um, so quite some time. Um, originally the property was called Yayaruk, La Yaruk, uh, meaning love nest. And, um, really kind of cool bernard smart who uh who originally planted the vineyard with his father uh he planted the original grenache that was that was that was in the what was what's now known as the high sands uh which is the the vineyard that the this wine comes from within mclaren vale uh so really cool uh rich history there since 1946. um one thing that's probably even cooler about it and like you know um let me back up i don't want to say it's cooler but like it got bought by somebody cool right so uh the jackson family wines um which they have a huge portfolio if you've ever had kendall jackson it's the same family who owns kendall jackson but they also uh run with a lot of products like hickenbotham uh for those of you who have ever hung out with me at like morton's or if you've been on the website and you've purchased a bottle of the hickenbotham um the the same family the jackson family owns hickenbotham they also bought yangara back in 2001 and so they kind of incorporated this brand into their portfolio and the same winemaker peter frazier who makes hickenbotham which those wines if you guys already know if you've had it are phenomenal um they brought him on board with the on Yungara to take lead on this property uh and that's how they kept moving forward with it so they make great product and now they have a great winemaker here too so Grenache Syrah Mouved uh this is 58 percent Grenache 24 percent Shiraz and 18 percent Mouved um and it is a it's a bold wine but it's beautiful I'm still realizing I'm talking about this wine and I am still on the Chardonnay I've tried grocery store non-alcoholic wine before and it was undrinkable. I'm going to, I'm going to let you know. I'm just curious if like people are actually interested too. You know what I mean? Um, Cause I'm not, I mean, I'm happy to, I want to take, I'm going to kind of like take care of everybody. And so a part of that is making sure that I carry products that, that hit the mark. So I read about it and I haven't had it yet. So I just didn't know if it was worth my time to go try it uh, to see if anybody out there would be interested. But and that's that's me main, mainly me just trying to be like I'm curious about how it hits for everybody. You know what I mean? I just realized that uh, Diana and David didn't log in tonight, and they haven't they haven't said anything. Normally they say some stuff too. But all right. By the way, you know what? Um, I'm also curious. Are you guys ready to have another guest back on? Because I haven't had a guest in a while. And I feel like it'd be dope to like have one more person back on again, uh, just for kicks and giggles. Um, just kind of stir it up. You know what I mean? Um, this wine, the GSM gets fermented with which of the two do, do I prefer out of these two wines? Is that what you mean? Yes, violets is a great descriptor, Ed Nora. Uh, it, it really, it, it smells and it tastes like violets. Um, plum, blackberry, I, I said I had a glass earlier, so I haven't had a sip yet, but uh, she said unicorns and rainbows. Damn, girl, you should have added this one to your cart too. Um, I don't have a preference out of the two. If I had, if I gun to the head, if I had to pick, I'd probably pick the red, um, but I really, I like them both. I think they're both stunning wines. Um, where was I going? This is uh, made with indigenous yeast, uh, aged for 10 months in French oak barriques. Uh, Bright pop, I was telling you some descriptors like uh, blackberry, blueberry. You definitely get the vanilla pepper and that violet really stands out.
Mm. It's just so damn good, man. There's a small hint of tobacco on the palate. That pepper really comes through on the finish. Yeah, the floral element of this wine is is on point. It really is. Um, and it really keeps you coming back for more. Uh, I hope you guys, I know that James made the ribeye, and I'm hoping that, that it hit the mark because uh, I think that this is absolutely stunning with any kind of red meat. Uh, we didn't go that route. So you guys have to know, okay, when I put the pairings together, um, we've already had that. So, so when I, when I mail it out is because I've already ch tasted it and I wanted to make sure it was good. Um, so, uh, like tonight we, we had it with stew. Um, so I didn't have the white wine tonight with dinner. I just had it as like a little aperitif. Uh, and then with dinner, uh, with my beef stew, I had this wine and I thought it was beautiful. So I don't have a preference if I had to pick, like, if you were like, you know, pick one. I would pick, I would pick the red, although I don't know why you would be like pick one, man. Uh, but you know, if you were, I'd pick the red. What else you guys got, Marianne, Ralph? How are you guys doing? How was your guys' steak? I saw the salmon. The salmon looked beautiful in that picture. By the way, I know that you guys like the wines, but but how was uh, how was everything else? By the way, Jordan, we got to start meeting up again, dude, because I, I can't finish these bottles. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm Some trying samples. really. Yeah, man, I got to I got to pour you off a couple glasses because I yeah, I um I'm trying really hard to uh, to pay closer attention to what I'm eating and drinking um, in an effort to kind of manage my weight a little bit. Um, and uh, and, I you know, when you don't when you don't track all those calories in a bottle of wine the liquid calories that yeah dude sneak the liquid on calories you. dude they, they get you man and so um so i've been paying close closer attention to that but you know it's hard dude i like to drink you know what i mean and uh and yep. especially I, like i can throw down a bottle of wine no problem uh <laughs> that you have to you have to there's a lot of walking involved to offset one bottle of wine <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure so so yeah, we're gonna have to make that. Steak was cooked to perfection as always. Oh damn, oh you perfect. Okay, I see you boo boo. Dope. What did you guys think of the red? Let's go with that. Christy, how did you like the red? The uh, the Yangara Aunt Nora is, um, is 30 bucks. It's the same price as the Bin 311. And I think I have, I still have a few bottles left, so I, I think you're I think you're in a safe space. Um, I want to say I have like four to six bottles or something like that. Um, so there's still plenty of that. Man, we ain't getting number crickets today, Jordan. Damn. Everybody nine must either people be, and no and also I know well I mean you know everybody must either be like really into what they're drinking and eating you know yeah dinner time Monaco Monaco what's up Matt what's up thanks for joining guys appreciate you at this point of the talk you are pretty much just watching me drink so if you have any questions feel free to chime in we are drinking Penfold's Bin 311 Chardonnay, and we're drinking Yangara uh, GSM, uh, all from Australia. Sorry, I'm slow to switch to the red. First sip is delicious. Don't apologize. I'm over here trying to rush things along. I've actually been to the Mc... What? Uh, <laughs> Tori's just lurking, man. They're just hanging out in the background, just watching. How did you, Tori, how did you guys like the wines? I mean, like, you know, I want to know. And thank you, Monica. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Aunt Nora, when, how long ago did you, did you go visit McLaren Vale? Um, so I got to be honest. So I really want to travel, right? I haven't really traveled much uh, as a Psalm. I feel like that's one of the pieces that I'm missing 
in my life is that I haven't gotten to travel as much as I would like to. Of course, I have a beautiful wife and I have beautiful children. Um, so, you know, tr trade off on, on, on traveling a little bit there. Right. But, um, but I want to know how your experience was in McLarenville, because even though I really would love to visit Australia, I am absolutely terrified of spiders and like, yeah, I get it. Like, you know, you're not going to see spiders everywhere. Cause like, well, that's not everywhere in Australia. I get that. But if I see one big motherfucker, I might die of a heart attack or something. I don't know. Like I, I would freak out. So, so yeah, uh, Tori, I'm really glad that you're loving both of the wines. Good. Uh, and Tori, uh, hi from the Batemans. Um, thank you for putting the work in for the pairings. Oh, thank, thanks. Cuz appreciate you. Thank you for saying that. Uh, it's really hard. I have to drink a lot. Uh, we were supposed to go back to Australia and visit McLarenville, but COVID, stupid COVID, Carrie Ann, I'm sorry. Um, Chrissy said, I didn't open it because every bottle I've had that you have suggested in your boxes has been amazing. And, and uh, I like you, have to watch the, the intake. For sure. I get that. Uh, well, enjoy the Chardonnay. Here's a trick too, Christy, with the reds, right? If you, if you want to drink like half of the white, well, if you can drink a bottle of wine, let's start with that. If you can drink one, if you can get halfway through the Chardonnay, put that in the fridge. When you, when you, here's another little trick, like with the red wine, if you do want to open it on the same night, you can, if you get halfway through that bottle, put that in the fridge and it'll buy you like an extra day or two um max like three to four days and even that's kind of like sketch you know what i mean um but like you have three or four days to like really be able to enjoy those wines if they're in the fridge the thing with the red is if you put it back in the fridge you just have to make sure it comes back up to temperature when you revisit it ian thanks for joining i love you boo boo i miss you uh i had south last week and it was fucking delicious the jambalaya was fire um in the early 90s i went with the church group so unfortunately we couldn't drink lame no spiders i'm really glad to hear that for you uh the spiders are hidden australia is worth it just beautiful land and people i've heard that the people are incredibly friendly um and you can say that the spiders are hidden but i've seen one too many many videos of uh you know spiders lurking inside of random toilets it you know I don't know what kind of establishment it is. It's just a video on YouTube. It's enough to terrify me. Um, we really like the pairings because we end up cooking things we haven't cooked before and it's fun. Um, dope. And I'm really sad that you weren't able to enjoy the uh, shrimp because I know you have the allergy, but uh, it looked like the sauce that you made uh, with your salmon. It looked really, really good. Wife and mainly kids mean you need to travel for... <laughs> for work. I need to travel for work. It's true. I really do. Um, you guys keep buying more wine and one of these days I'll actually be able to, to travel for work. <laughs> um, spiders are not prevalent in that area. Kangaroos, kookaburra, uh, cool birds. Oh, dope. Dope. Hey, Aunt Nora, were you into birds as much at that time in the nineties as you are now? McLaren is like the Napa of Australia. Good to know. I like that. Napa's pretty dope, despite being expensive or pricey. Um, you know, it's all relative, right? Like the tourism piece is huge there. People are going to pay to go hang out and drink wine in Napa. It's stunning there. It's, you know, yeah. Aunt Nora, can I send people to your page? to like your Facebook page to follow you, to add you as a friend, so that way they can see all the dope ass photos that you post of the birds. Aunt Nora does a lot of bird watching and she, I don't know how, she, she gets the most amazing photos. I think it's absolutely stunning. Can I send people to your page? Is that cool or is that weird? I understand if you want privacy, it's okay. Not everybody likes to be, you know, in front of the camera talking about wine. Ian, uh, you guys missed literally all of the talk about <laughs> We're at the point of like drinking and answering questions. So we're drinking Penfold's Ben 311 Chardonnay. Uh, amazing. 
Um, and then Yangara uh, Grenache Ramuved blend, which is also delicious. Both very, very good. We're going into summer. What's a great summer drinking wine? I have a phenomenal rosé that's really good bang for your buck on the website by a producer called Parasol. They have roots that actually go all the way back to the Knights Templar. Um, Knights Templar actually ran and produced their, their wines. Um, it's really, really cool. Phenomenal bang for your buck. Uh, that rosé is phenomenal. I have a couple of dope ass whites on the, on the website right now. Uh, there's one called Lil James's Basket Press by St. Cosme. Um, that one is amazing. It's a 50-50 Sauvignon Blanc and Viognier. Drinks beautifully. And then if you want something that's really unique and br like brilliant, it's brilliant, man. Um, I have this, uh, this uh, producer called Black Slate. It's a Spanish uh, Grenache Blanc and uh pedro jimenez really unique very different but very very delicious all great summertime wines also the champagne game is dope right now because i have pierre jimenez on on the website um which is amazing champagne and then i also have um charles heidzik charles Heidzik. go read the little bl the little blurb on the website about charles heidzik uh and then order some because you will not be disappointed it's amazing um hey everybody everybody go follow uh aunt nora just look up on facebook look up nora lee n-o-r-a-l-e-e -E, and add her as a friend uh and then uh and then you know she posts the dopest pictures she's she's into bird watching and um she's she, it's incredible man she takes the most amazing pictures uh carrie i'm really glad that you like the rose too thank you for saying that um it, it is it's really really good so agree with you i didn't know we had so many dang cool birds here in cali dude it's crazy man i didn't think that i was in the birds until i started following uh aunt nora and what she was doing really that was just like i was already following her she just started posting a bunch of dope ass photos so it was cool And Nora, I don't know why it's just really funny to me. Just like imagining you say thanks, bro. I don't know why. It's just like it's really funny. <laughs> thanks, bro. Yeah, you got it. Absolutely. Thank you for being dope, for being a dope person and uh and doing dope shit. What else is good, guys? I'm gonna probably wrap it up here in a couple minutes. We'll call it a night. I'm gonna go get my kids down and turn on, turn off all five million products around me um you know, like microphone two lights you know cameras all that fun stuff soon soon we'll actually be uh you know once once vaccinations and stuff like happen uh jordan and i will probably start doing some stuff like in person like where he's just behind literally behind the camera like three four five feet away yeah excited and uh and, and you know It'll be it'll be even cooler because then I don't have to do anything but really drink and get drunk on camera in front of you guys. And I feel like that's I feel like that's, that's a that's much the more dream. accurate representation. That's the dream, baby. That's what I want to do. Food Network. Call me, baby. It's your boy. It's Tesh. <laughs> the stories are really fun, right? Um, the the one so it's really funny right so okay so uh i went to sack yard yesterday um for a friend's birthday and afterward we went to crew and crew was amazing by the way uh shout out to anthony i don't know if anthony watches my shit but if he does shout out to anthony uh at crew because he hooked us up he took very good care of us got us a nice little table um and uh you know, I gifted my friend a bottle of wine and um, and I told the story about the wine because everyone wanted to know. And Anthony was like, I just learned something. And I was like, yo, that's really cool. Um, it is cool that like, you know, I can tell the stories and share these wine with people um, and people who are even in the industry are really excited to, to hear and learn about them. So um, when that happens, will I be cooking the pairings? probably i mean i feel like that would only be right like right jordan i think that would be cool right like, i think so like i show up i cook yeah you know we drink 
we eat dinner and then we go live. I feel like that's only right. It's a whole food, wine, video yeah. experience. Yeah, I feel like it would be even better. And then eventually when everyone gets caught up, I would love to start doing these in person. Like, I feel like that would be really dope. Um, and, you know, instead of instead of the format being where, like, you know, we, we get you the wines, it'll be like, you pay and come hang out, we'll do the dinner live kind of thing. Um, and then you can buy the wines and take them home with you if you want that that night kind of thing. Um, but I feel like that that's, that's, uh, that's out a ways before we get to that. Um, but eventually, I think that would be really cool when things go back to whatever, whatever the fuck your normal is now. Uh, I think it would be really cool. So, so yeah, Young Gara. I hope you guys like it. Ah, man, that is so good. It's super, um, super juicy. All right, guys. If there are n right, I know James. I feel like that's like the the live dinner and wine tasting. I feel like that's gonna that's gonna be the way to move the the wine talks with Tesh forward um, as things kind of go back. Because even though this has been really cool and like we're practicing social distancing and you know out of necessity, and that's good because we needed to do this. Um, I just think that if we could do this whole thing live um and then like i really like walk you through like a full-blown wine dinner i think that that would be really cool are y'all ready to be teshed by wine <laughs> that was so bad i love you <laughs> that was really bad. you can't test this oh all right um oh christy you know what a piece of that though christy would be that we would still stream it so uh we, you know jordan and i have talked about that a little bit we're like if we do it live it'd be cool to do it live but then still stream it so that way you could people who are, are far away can still participate so uh there would still be the opportunity to or you could just fly up every two weeks you know what i mean i don't know how you roll baby maybe you roll large and that's a possibility for you and if it is um damn that would be really cool it'd be really cool hang, to hang out with you in person um what else i don't think i have anything else about the wines the wines kind of i you know i, I kind of like went over them and i feel like they speak for themselves if you love it as always with all of my wines you can scan the qr code on the back of the bottle and you can add it to your shopping cart um yeah by the way if you guys are ever in the situation especially for those of you guys who are watching if you guys are regularly ordering touch talk boxes um, if you want to order something, you're like, Hey man, I want it delivered, but can you just deliver it later with my test talk box later when I get the next one? That's absolutely fine. Um, that can be arranged. So all you got to do is just let me know, right? Like send me a message in the notes section of your order to say, Hey Tesh, add this to my test talk box for next month and I'll just have it all delivered the next round. And that's okay too. Um, but just be prepared that it won't be until the next month because I do all of these drops and I do all the wine drops in one big swoop. So, so yeah. Um, maybe I could make it up once a quarter if it's on the weekend. We will probably entertain that idea because I feel like uh, as things slowly open back up and things kind of start moving in that direction, uh, I think that weekends will probably work better for most people. Um, might not work better for restaurants, you know what I mean? Cause restaurants are going to need that space on the weekend, but, um, you know, we'll definitely cross that, cross that, that path when we have to cross that bridge when we have to. So, uh, that is all I have for you guys, my friends. I hope that you guys enjoyed the pairings. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed dinner and I'm really excited that I was able to get you guys excited about, uh, Chardonnay and Grenache Syrah Mouved blends. And I'm especially excited that you guys got excited uh, about Australian wines, man. Don't sleep on them. They have so much to offer uh, and they make beautiful, beautiful wines. And for all of you guys who are watching um, and are participating in the Tesh Talks, I will see you guys in two weeks on the 21st, where we will be drinking the Hewitts and Shiraz and the Killikanoon Riesling. Um, I know, 
it's Riesling, Riesling, bro. You know, man, you, you, what you know about Australian Riesling, bro? Um, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. James Udinsky, bro, you were the person who I wanted to have on this episode, bro. Uh, James lived in Australia for quite some time, and he knows so much more, I feel like, than I – I mean, I just – mine's all, like, book knowledge. You know what I mean? James lived there. And so I, and maybe on the next episode, we can, we can try and find a way to have James on. That'd be really cool. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Carrie Ann. Thank you, everybody. James, Christine, uh, Christy, thank you, guys. I appreciate you. And Ian, thanks for ch tuning in, man. I appreciate it. All right, guys. See you guys live in two weeks. And, uh, and we will drink some more Australian wines. Cheers, guys. Until next time.